I think they would be shocked, surprised, and heartbroken. But the reality is many people don't really want to know either. For many, it's the end of the road. We're pretty full most of the time. And it's not their fault. Everybody that works at the shelter loves these animals, but sometimes you have to love them enough to send them back home. Those who work in animal control have a message. And sometimes that's hard for some people to accept, uh, but it's all about education. You can solve this problem. Bottom line, we can stop this. Good evening, everyone. I'm John Dwyer. Welcome to News 2 Extra. Tonight, we look at the issues affecting animal control in Tennessee. Each year, Americans spend $41 billion, that's billion with a B, on their pets. So in a country of so many animal lovers, why do we continue to have the problems we have in communities across Middle Tennessee dealing with animal control? If Metro's animal shelter were a motel, the sign out front would almost always say no vacancy. For those that do get in, the accommodations are good, at least by shelter standards. It is a wonderful facility. Uh, the city council does the very best they can, I believe, for the animal care and control program. Judy so Lottavache remembers when it wasn't always that way. The old Metro dog pound sat next to the city dump. It too could be described as a dump. The building was in such condition that even when you cleaned and cleaned and cleaned, you would never be able to actually get the smell out of the building or the germs out of the building. Today, a modern brick facility that's much larger, has a full staff, and even has its own veterinary clinic might lead you to believe that Nashville's pet problem has been solved. Absolutely not. Um, we struggle just as, as most shelters do. Here, where so many good things have been done right, the problem that threatens to choke all animal shelters remains. There'll never be enough money as long as the numbers of animals entering our shelters across the state are increasing. Even when there is no vacancy, the dogs and cats just keep coming in. We could build a bigger shelter every year but, for instance, in our situation, taking in more than 10,000 animals a year, each year, if we continue to do that, I mean, certainly no shelter can be built large enough to contain animals for a lifetime. We're not meant to be a lifetime sanctuary. So vacancies have to be made. Our facility is very much like all other animal shelters, and we stay full all the time, so when as new ones come in, which they do on a daily basis, someone has to leave to make room for them. And we all hope they'll leave through the front door with a new family. But unfortunately, a very high percentage leave through the back door and are euthanized. It's a painful fact to those who work in animal control. For the majority of cats and dogs brought in, this is the last stop. Bottom line, everything in here and everything in the other shelters out there in the state would have a much better chance of being adopted and living with a loving family and being taken care of if there weren't so many. But what bothers Lotta Bache and others like her in animal control is that it's a problem that has a simple solution. It truly does. You know, society has such serious problems and many of them the answer is very complicated, very challenging and perhaps not feasible. This is a society problem that can be solved very easily and it's simply being a responsible pet owner and getting your pet spayed or neutered. But too often this simple act is not part of a pet owner's agenda. We're not reaching the public. I don't know if we're not doing a good enough job educating the public, but certainly no one intends to allow their pet to breed knowing that the odds are pretty high that the results, the, the kittens and puppies, most likely won't get a home. Lotta Boucher dreams of a day when every dog and every cat that comes into Metro's animal shelter has a chance to find a home. We're hoping one day to see the numbers come down. I'm hoping it will be in my lifetime. Uh, there are days that I seriously wonder.
People who go into animal control, that field, are most often led by their love of animals. But the reality of having to euthanize so many of those animals can be stressful and frustrating. Recently, staff members at Metro's animal shelter expressed their frustration in a unique way. They made a chain of collars, collars taken from dogs that had to be euthanized and had no tag on the collar to identify their owners. It was a visual reminder of just how big the overpopulation problem is. I thought people needed to see this in order to make a statement. You can tell people all day long that they need to put their tag on their animals, but when you have a visual, I think it really hits home. What makes this display even more poignant is that most dogs that come into the shelter do not even have collars, and this is only what was collected in about nine months. There are many options in Middle Tennessee to get pets spayed or neutered. Some even come to you. Nashville Humane's Rover is a surgical unit on wheels that does spay and neutering free to those who qualify. And in Wilson County, the space station operated by Wilson County's Humane Association has performed services in 19 Tennessee counties as well as its area of concentration, Wilson County. Go to our website, WKRN.com, for information that links you to these and other spay and neutering options in Middle Tennessee. Coming up on this News 2 Extra, penny pinching at the pound. Plus, some of the animals looking for homes right now in Middle Tennessee. Welcome back, everyone. You know, even in good economic times, money is always a problem for animal shelters. Perhaps no one is better at stretching a dollar as those that work in animal control working on a shoestring budget. That's a normal part of the job. And in Tennessee, smaller communities, it's often done on a shoestring staff as well. There you go. Get rid of your worms. Eddie Blackwood is making sure these little guys get a healthy start. He wants to adopt a kitten. <laughs> there you go. It's just one of the jobs he'll take care of today at Cheatham County's Animal Shelter. We've got myself, and we've got two animal control officers, and uh, a clerk that works the office for us. So there's four of us all together. Eddie's not complaining. Just a few years ago, Cheatham County didn't even have animal control. We've got a program here that was set up uh, about three years ago, and predominantly we're mostly concerned with their major problem in the beginning was, was stray dogs that were packing up and bothering people and stuff. People letting their dogs on loose. Keep our vaccines in this fridge over here. He's not bothered by the rusty fridge. He's not bothered by the old ambulance recycled to use for animal control or that it no longer runs or the truck next to it that also no longer runs. He still has the other pickup he got from TDOT after they had used it up. That's just the way you do things in animal control. It would always be good to have more money, like I'd love to have horse trailers and barns and stuff to take care of all that and the staff equipped to do that. But uh, there are other priorities, and I realize those priorities. So we make the best with what we have, and, and I wouldn't say we're short-funded. Uh, each year we come in under budget. Uh, we cut corners where we can. Uh, we don't cut corners on animal care. That, that's a priority right there. With schools and police and firefighters and roads and all the other things that counties across Tennessee must take care of, how it takes care of strays is often pushed to the side. No, we're not rolling in money. I think initially when they set up the program, uh, nobody knew how much it was going to really cost to run a program for a county this size. The county is fairly big. The population is small compared to the size of the county. They funded appropriately to what they thought would be required. I think as time goes on, uh, the program is going to have to grow in order to incorporate large population of people, large population of pets. Blackwood believes what matters is that county leaders are trying to do the right thing for the county's dogs and cats. Now he thinks the county citizens need to do the right thing. I think people just need to take responsibility for their I think animal control needs to be out of work. People just need to take responsibility for their animals. Now there is situations where animal control is going to be required at all times and that's where situations with bites and stuff, you have a rabies risk and we have to do quarantines and stuff like that. But as far as stray dogs and stuff go, I mean, animals get out every now and then, that's going to happen. But for people to blatantly let them run loose all the time, and, and ultimately they either get shot, poisoned, hit by a car, somebody steals them, some, or they starve to death, or get in dire straits and get very sick. So, you know, uh, it's just they need to take responsibility and step up. 
Like most everyone who works in animal control, Blackwood says okay, stepping up first means reducing pet populations. But there are other steps people can take to help local animal shelters. Donate supplies. They're always looking for food, litter, blankets, towels, toys, leashes, and cleaning supplies. Donate time. Small staffs can always, always use a helping hand. And of course, if you can, donate money. We'll be right back. All through this program, we've been showing you pictures of dogs and cats looking for a new home. Sadly, there are many more than we could ever show in just one program. Visit our website, WKRN.com, for links to even more best friends waiting to find a home. I'm John Dwyer. Thanks for watching.